We're in conversation with Andrew Holland of Ambit Investment Advisory. Andrew, okay, politics aside, what are the other big triggers you're watching out for when it comes to our markets? Are you worried about the monsoons? Earnings, have they been in line? Uh, are you also looking for any cues on that front with regards to any kind of growth trajectory? Uh, what's on your mind? Yeah, you know, I, I, uh, in terms of the earnings, uh, you know, fortunately there hasn't been any, you know, uh, even major positive or, or, or negative surprises. I think at the end of it, you know, we'll have another set of uh, brokers saying, you know, we're at the, you know, mar uh, the, you know, kind of profits have, uh, have, have bottomed out, and um, but you know, I'm not seeing huge upgrades uh, at the moment, uh, and I suspect that's still there for another quarter. Um, because, you know, reality on the ground, as I said, you know, nothing's really changing despite uh, uh, the market's optimism. Um, so I don't think the cues are going to come from earnings. It's, it's going to come from after the elections and the first 100 days. I think that will give us all, hopefully, uh, the, um, you know, the, the optimism uh, that, the, you know, the, the economy can start to, to move forward. Uh, but that said, you know, there's a lot of uh, negatives out there, not just globally, uh, but locally as well. If the monsoons are, are not there, then obviously inflation remains, um, you know, a problem for, for India. Uh, and obviously you're going to have that, you know, new government versus the RBI growth versus inflation uh, argument. So that, that will, uh, I think, keep the markets uh, a little bit, um, uh, you know, worried about the, the very short term. But I think the governance issue of the new government and how they tackle reforms I think it's going to be the key thing for the next three months. And if we can come through that uh, unscathed and, and, and moving forward, uh, then that will be the, you know, the, the earnings kicker that I'm looking for and what will happen over the next two years. So if you look at the, kind of, um, the multiples in, say, the um, cyclical sectors, um, particularly um, you know, the kind of capital goods sector, you know, they're looking quite high, but you know, that's not taking into account the, the order levels that you would expect for, for these companies to attain over, over the next two years. So, you know, PEs could be, you know, if you take, take a Siemens, it's, you know, you know, nearly 25, 26 times. You know, that could easily halve over the next two years as order flows come through. So these are the kind of um, companies we're looking at at the moment, losing a little bit down, down the scale from the, you know, the last and two rows in the BHLs. I was trying to look for other kind of capital goods companies, which, you know, I think will be a play on the larger economy. So it's, it's where you see the, the, you know, the big growth uh, in, 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 uh, in, in, in the economy. And I think that's going to be infrastructure spending. Um, and I think uh, capital goods, power, uh, auto, auto components and metals are going to be the, the, the big winners going forward. Andrew, we've seen a lot of uh, deleveraging already happen uh, as corporates try to clean up their balance sheets ahead of this big election, trying to get back in shape to get the growth and make the most of it. We've also seen an M&A activity, a lot of M&A activity, not just in India, but globally as well. Now, the battle for Alstom uh, globally. Do you think that is going to continue and probably pick up more pace into this year as balance sheets desperately need a big cleanup right now? Two parts to that. I mean, first of all, let me take your M and A. Um, you know, in the U.S., if you looked at the back end of last year, uh, most of the companies were running at manufacturing capacity of near, nearly 80 percent. Um, so they had to do one or two things: either stop paying larger dividends or doing buybacks and start investing. Um, so rather than invest and, and take time for that to pay off, they're starting to make big acquisitions. Uh, obviously, as they're confident that their own economy is now starting to pick up. Um, so I expect that will continue uh, for cash-rich com cash companies in the U.S. And obviously India will be, uh, you know, part of that um, if, if we get, uh, you know, a new government with good governance and, 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 and reformist in, 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 uh, in terms of opening up sectors. Um, in terms of India, you see, I'm not looking at financial gearing as, as being part of the, uh, the earnings growth I'm looking at. It's really the operational gearing. You know, when manufacturing capacity in a, in a company moves from 60 to 65 percent, it has a huge impact on your bottom line profitability. And one of the companies we mentioned before, say Barrett Forge, you saw that just by their overseas operations, the manufacturing capacity increasing and, and, and the profits moving up by, you know, 40 percent or so. So that's the kind of operational gearing you can, you can bank on, um, you know, going forward as the Indian economy picks up. If interest rates come down, which hopefully they will at the back end of this year, then the financial gearing plays in as well for, for highly indebted companies. But that's not a, a play we want to, to, to kind of dwell on at the moment. It's the operational gearing of India is huge.
one of the key themes that we've been talking to you for the last couple of months has been the focus that you've been saying as far as the industrial segment's concerned. Does that still look attractive going forward from here? Yeah, so again, you know, we started to, it's across all the sectors, I think, um, you know, I've mentioned, um, but, uh, you know, we think, um, you know, the likes of uh, the power sector, we, we've been starting to, 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 to buy shares there, uh, particularly in Tata Power. We, we think, uh, again, there's a good turnaround story there. We think the worst is over for the power sector now. I mean, there's lots of regulatory uh, problems there, but we think... Uh, um, you know, the, 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 the move forward, I, I think, is similar to what we saw in the kind of telecom se sector, where there's a lot of regulation, a lot of problems, uh, but we'll come through it and, and, and we'll come through it in a better shape uh, to move forward. So we, we like the power sector, but we're playing a lot of the, the capital goods se sectors at the moment because we think that's where the orders will, will start to come through, uh, you know, in, uh, in the next six months. And, you know, if you look at most uh, companies in, 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 in this sector, um, it's not really the kind of uh, the earnings growth which uh, you know people look at. It's actually the, the order book. So if you do a, a share price and order book, they're, they're usually going tandem. So the bigger your order book, the higher your share price. Um, so it's a very simple equation to, to look at. Um, and so we think the power sector will start to see more and more orders coming uh, coming through uh, over the next six months. Auto components have had a, a pretty good run, so we're, we're kind of uh, less, uh, you know, less kind of, uh, kind of enthusiastic to be buying at these levels. Uh, if there's any correction in the market, we'll continue to do that. Metals is another area we've been picking up quite strongly in terms of Tata Steel, um, and uh, we, we feel, again, the worst is over for this company. Um, and again, the operational gearing in India uh, is going to be huge. Uh, and the profits could, you know, could easily go by 40-50% over the next two years. So, again, a very cheap stock on a two-year basis. So these are the kind of uh, you know, areas and companies that we're looking at, uh, and we'll continue now to look at the kind of uh, what are called the larger mid-caps going forward uh, within these sectors. Again, there's a lot of value to be had. Uh, you know, people say it hasn't had a good run already. It's a you know, uh, couple of good sectors up 30%. But I think on a, on a two-year view, you, you know, you've got uh, some, some companies which will you know, more than double in share price. So that's the optimistic view we have on these sectors. Um, everyone keeps saying, what about banks? Um, I, I'm not convinced on banks. I still think there's a lot of problems. There's a lot of capital raising that the banks have to do uh, if they're going to uh, be able to support the economic growth, which I'm talking about. Um, so there could be a lot of dilutive uh, issues of shares going forward. Uh, well, they need to issue shares to go forward in terms of raising capital. So um, I don't see the banking sector. I don't mind renting it. I still don't want to own it yet. Um, and as I said, uh, you know, consumer stocks... Um, I, I think are expensive and will underperform significantly over the next one and a half years. Andrew, before we let you go, how much uh, risk do you carry with you into May 16th? Uh, the second half of the rally has been about mid-caps, really. Would you carry that risk into May 16th and forward? Do you think that's, uh, that space has some steam left? That's a great question. I mean, our fund, actually, we, we've got a high amount of cash. Uh, the reason for that is, is two, twofold. One, we, we, we don't like to bet big on events. Um, and, you know, it gives us the opportunity to, um, you know, see what uh, the results are and, and, and continue to invest, uh, um, you know, for, for our investors in, in a, in, in not in taking a bet on, on what the re election results will be rather than what fundamentals might be.